Howard Armstrong didn't listen to the radio because he was so annoyed by the static. And working 17-hour days, seven days a week for a dollar a year at Columbia, he struggled to work out a way to eliminate it. All radios operated on a principle known as amplitude modulation, or AM. AM could not broadcast the full range of sounds humans could hear. And in thunderstorms, it crackled with static. Broadcasters had long resigned themselves to AM. Sarnoff had once said to him, why don't you come up with a little black box to eliminate static? He already become a millionaire from, from patents he had sold to RCA, and he got busy in the basement of Philosophy Hall to work on this thing. And finally, after several years' work, he said to Sarnoff he was ready. After dozens of experiments involving sets built with hundreds of tubes, Armstrong discovered wideband frequency modulation. Sarnoff had always hoped someone would come up with a way to clean up radio signals, he told Armstrong. But FM was something else again. It is a revolution, he said, and required an entirely new system of broadcasting. But that would mean scrapping millions of existing AM sets. Sarnoff was not interested. Sarnoff was relying on the huge income from radio to finance his plans for television. And it was going to take its place as radio had done. So Sarnoff saw FM not only as a threat to his technical plans, but as a threat to his economic plans. Armstrong decided to develop FM alone. On the Palisades at Alpine, New Jersey, 500 feet above the Hudson River, he built a 425-foot radio tower. It could be seen from David Sarnoff's office in the RCA building. These are FM stations W2XMN and W2XEA, located at Alpine, New Jersey. Armstrong began broadcasting and licensing companies to make FM receivers. By frequency modulation, these relayed programs are transmitted from station to station, from city to city, and from mountaintop to mountaintop without telephone connections by means of crystal clear FM broadcasting. Tonight, the United States... When Sarnoff belatedly offered Armstrong a million dollars for the rights to manufacture FM, the inventor refused. But David Sarnoff did his best to suppress FM keeping it from the industry and the world so effectively that years after its invention, even some radio engineers didn't understand how it worked and how revolutionary it was. When people speak of the golden age of radio, they're speaking of the shortest golden age in history. Its golden years perhaps covered uh, a decade, a little more than that, maybe 15 years. And it was cut short by the release of television. The Federal Communications Commission had declared that all sound for television would be carried over FM, which meant millions in royalties for Armstrong. But RCA refused to pay royalties, encouraged other manufacturers not to pay them either, and developed circuits which it claimed were different. And in an attempt to put Armstrong out of business once and for all, Sarnoff successfully lobbied the FCC to change FM's frequency, making obsolete every one of the radios Armstrong had licensed. Armstrong kept driving himself, kept getting more and more in debt. He had at one time been the largest shareholder of RCA. He sold most of his stock, and he was fighting this giant corporation with all the resources that it had. He had been a, a man of enormous drive, tension, and he had driven himself to the breaking point and it finally snapped. 